Hello, hello, welcome to the replay. My name is Morgan Guest McDonald. I'm the founder of Paper Raven Editing. Um, I'm a writing coach and I'm an, an editor and an author. And I have recently become really convicted. Hello, hello, everyone, as you're joining. I've become really convicted about the power of writing a book. And um, I guess I've spent a lot more. I I started sort of my writing coaching in in academia and in the last few years I've been spending more and more time working with entrepreneurs and um, people who work you know with online businesses and things like that hi everyone as you're joining um, thanks for tuning in today uh, just pop in the comment let me know your name and where you're coming from let me know if you blog or if you want to write a book because that's kind of what we're talking about today is the power of writing a book and I feel like a few years ago in business, people would say, oh, you have to you have to blog, right? Like that's like the standard advice that we give to online entrepreneurs is like you have to blog and the more times the better. And I feel like a few years ago, the standard advice was to blog like five times a week. Um, thanks, thanks for the hearts, guys. If this, as we're talking, like if, if things resonate for you, just throw some hearts on the screen so I know that um, that what we're talking about is is meaningful to you and uh, that's ultimately what I want with these scopes is for for this to be helpful to you guys so pop in the comments let me know your name where you're from um, if you blog if you want to write a book that kind of thing um, so I feel like the old standard advice was like blog as much as you can and that will help bring in clients like that there was this relationship between blogging a lot and getting a lot of clients um, but I think that's starting to shift a little bit because there are so many blogs out there. And now don't get me wrong, like I think blogging is really important to have like that steady, predictable online presence. But I think what we're seeing now is more and more of a movement to supplementing a blog with a book. And a book is a really fantastic asset, especially if you're in business, because it's something that you write once and then it's in the Amazon store for a long time. Strategic, this is Terry, strategic blogging and growing your list is how to gain clients. Yes, that is true. Um, you're right that it's strategic blogging that's important, not just like throwing your random thoughts up on there. And consistency, consistency is important and, um, and having a place where people can opt into your list and things like that. But we're starting to see some really interesting trends with books too because once you write the book, and we're not talking like a huge 100, 200 page book here. We're talking like 15,000 words. Hey Darnell, good to see you blogging and tweeting. Nice, I like it. You could think about writing a book and I'm talking like a pretty short book, 15,000 words, like 50, 60 pages, something like that. Your book can be posts, interesting. Yeah, I have seen some of that too where people take blog posts and compile them into a book um, and if that's something that your target reader is interested in that's definitely something that you can do um, you can also really it doesn't take that long to write the book from scratch either oh thanks Sarah <laughs> I like my hair too <laughs> um, it's a lot easier when it's short definitely a little less prep for these scopes but um, the cool thing about a book is if it's 15,000 words you can write that in like three months or less you put it up on Amazon it's there as an asset forever when people are searching along your you know, if you are into uh, Twitter. Okay, so you tweet a lot, Darnell, right? That's great. What if you wanted to write a book about how to use Twitter? I mean, there are some out there, but the more books there are in an area, the more people there are who are wanting to buy those books. So it's actually a pretty good sign. So they go to Amazon and they type into the search bar, like, how to tweet. How much would you sell? I assume you're saying sell. Uh, yeah, sell that ebook for. Uh, it depends. Um, so let's say Darnell put this book out about tweeting and he's trying to grow his list, right? Because that's kind of an important thing to do when you're in business. Um, he might put it out uh, at first for a pretty low price, like 99 cents or 1.99 or 2.99. Um, and hopefully people will kind of treat it as an impulse buy and be like, oh, here's this guy, Darnell, he wrote this book about tweeting and it's only 99 cents and get people to buy that book and it's value packed, right? I mean, instead of what you would put in a blog, you're putting it in a book and you're giving some of your backstory, you're giving some of your philosophy, some of your perspective. And as these people read this 15,000 words, they're like, wow, this Darnell guy really knows what he's talking about. I wanna hear more from him. And you have in your book, a list building strategy built into the book. So some people kind of go overboard on this, but I think it's a good, um, Terry, how do you get exposure on Amazon? 
to promote the book? That's a really good question. Um, I'll hit that in just a second. So you have this list building part of the book. So like in my book, um, which is Start Writing Your Book Today, a step-by-step -step plan to write your nonfiction book from first draft to finished manuscript, manuscript um, at the very beginning of the book, what in that like first 10 pages that you can see on Amazon, like as a freebie, you know, put, it, put in, um, what am I trying to say? The freebie 10 pages where you can like look inside the book. Oh, thanks, Terry. Um, there is actually an opt-in section. It is a free behind the scenes video. Click this link and you can have access to the behind the scenes video. It's a really great video and it, it's like, um, Gory, how do you get published nowadays? Okay, I'm gonna save that for just in just a few minutes too. So we've got Terry's question, we've got your question and y'all can remind me as I'm working through this scenario. So it's a value packed video and it's intended, not intended, It it's positioned as like, thanks for buying the book. Here's your free bonus. Just go to this website. When you go to the website, you log in, you, uh, you opt in, you put your email address and I send you the video and then you're on my email list. It's a, it's a great value trade because people love behind the scenes. I take you behind the scenes. Like, Oh, you have to go be like, Oh, check out, um, go to paperravenediting.com slash periscope. The replay and the notes are going to be on here. So uh, if you guys have to go, paperravenediting.com slash periscope. That's where I um, put the scope notes. Um, it's an Evernote file with the notes from this scope and uh, the replay. Catch the replay there. Okay. Um, so people opt into that because they want to see the behind the scenes video and I show them my Scrivener setup. I show them like where I literally wrote my book, like all this stuff. Okay. Bye, Sarah. And they love it and they, then they're on my list. And so then I can contact them, you know, when I'm releasing new blogs or when I have something new and exciting coming up in the business. So what we used to use the blogs specifically for, right? We used to just have these blogs where we're posting five times a week and we want people to come visit our blog and opt in. Well, now we're using those same techniques for writing books on Amazon. So we're using Amazon's platform to offer people this like pretty, like it's short, 15,000 words or so, um, but it's value packed, it's worthwhile quality books. And we have these opt-in techniques put into the book. Some people go overboard and like at the end of every chapter, they're like, sign up for my list. I don't recommend that. I recommend treating it as a real book, a real business building like asset, and then putting that list opt-in in there. Do I work for Amazon? No, but I would love to, I love Amazon. Okay, so we had a couple of questions. Thanks for the hearts, guys. So yeah, we had a couple of questions about, um, oh, once it's on Amazon, like how do you get it published? Not published, like promoted. That is the same, thank you, thanks. Is that gory with the blue? Thanks. Um, is really just like how you would market any book. Even when a first time author publishes with traditionally, thanks, publishes with a traditional publisher. If you're a first time author, Think about it. You're, let's say Harper Collins picks up your book or Random House or one of these big places. They have one team of publicity, publicity people and they put out a book a week, a book a week. And you're in the same boat as James Patterson and Danielle Steele and Anthony Robbins or whoever, right? I mean, so the publicity staff is going to be focusing on their big name authors. Whereas you, first time author, guess what? You got to you got to market your own book because the publicity staff is busy with their other authors. So even with Random House, first time author, you're going to have to do a lot of your own publicity. And the old school stuff was like book signings and getting on radio interviews and TV interviews and going out to, you know, locations where you thought people might want the book and just like setting up a table and selling it. <laughs> right. So that was kind of old school. Now it's new media, right? It is getting on podcasts. It's hosting webinars. It's using your existing platform like your blog. Um, so all of this is kind of hand in hand. Uh, it's and some of it is still old school, like go out to a bookstore and, and do a signing. Um, but it's a lot more, a lot more can be done online than, than ever before. And you just got to like talk about it all the time. Like when you're doing your periscopes or your podcasts or your, you know, anyone that you talk to, you just, you just work it into whatever you're talking about. Okay. This is the deal. I've written three books unpublished in Spanish and I have no idea what to do with Gory. <laughs> okay. So, um, you can publish them on Amazon. 
So what you, I mean, Amazon, it sounds really intimidating, but really you put them in a Word file, you go to 99designs.com, you hire someone to make a cover for you, and you open an Amazon author account, you um, put that Word file, you upload the Word file, you upload the cover, and it's literally like, in, like within a few minutes it's up for sale on Amazon. What do I think about Wattpad? I don't even know what Wattpad is. Um, but in my free behind the scenes video, I kind of walk you through this. Let me, let me, let me put up the link for that behind the scenes video and you can just hop on there and you can grab it. It's, um, start writing your book today. Oops, sorry. Let me, let me pull this up real quick so that you guys can, cause I actually walk you behind. Wattpad is an online publisher. I like Amazon. I don't I don't work for them, but I like Amazon because everyone who wants to buy ebooks is going to be looking on Amazon. They're using that search bar and if they're looking for a book in your area, if they're looking at Spanish books and below where it says like check out these other titles, your book could be listed as one of those titles. And so you're grabbing people who are already looking for books on Amazon. So if you go to this. Okay, if you go to startwritingyourbooktoday.com slash free bonus, startwritingyourbooktoday.com slash free bonus, there is a behind the scenes video that you can get right here. That's me on my couch at home. That's where I wrote my book. Um, opt in for this video and at the end of this video is where I show you how I uploaded my book to amazon.com. I show you how I got my cover design and put it all together and got it formatted and put it up on Amazon.com. So I'll put this link in the scope notes too. Startwritingyourbooktoday.com slash free bonus. Super easy guys. I'm not a techie kind of person. Um, so I did have someone help me format the book, but honestly, if you can, if you don't mind like having it in a Word document and then tweaking with the formatting a little bit you can upload it to Amazon it'll show you a preview and if there's something you don't like like a bullet point is messed up you go back to the Word document you kind of like shift it around a bit you re-upload it and it shows you the preview and you just tweak it until the ebook looks how you want it like how you want it to look it's so not complicated like Amazon is making this so easy and yeah there are tons of options Wattpad never heard of Wattpad but there's like um, obviously iBooks has its own platform and Basically, all I have to do is focus on promoting it in social media. Yes, so getting it up and published first, I think is like your first real goal because once it's published, then you can always refer to it and people can find it. Um, start, do you blog? Because blogging is important as much as, yes, publish first. Um, as, much as, this po as much as this scope is about writing a book instead of blogging a blog is still a core component, not really. Okay, so get yourself, so get the book up on Amazon. That's priority number one. Um, priority number two, s either start the website or, or like reboot your blogging. You have some samples online. Oh, that's a good idea too. And your podcast, perfect. Okay, so use the podcast. Um, there is also a resource, gosh, apparently I'm going to have to do a scope about this. There's a resource called Scribd. Let me pull that up too. Scribd.com. And it's online for free. So I made a sample of my first like chapter or two of my book and put it up on scrib.com. And I, um, I have that sample embedded everywhere. So like my, hold on, in, in the bottom of my email signature, I have, oops, sorry, get rid of that. I have, here, download the sample of my book, and I have the website here and a free sample. It takes you to scrib.com where there's a there's a free PDF of the book, and so like there we go. Um, so I talk about it everywhere, and most people who are talking about book marketing these days, it does still revolve around your website or your podcast or your YouTube channel, wherever it is that you spend the most time talking to people. Who can help with a professional looking blog? Oh my gosh, goodness, start out. Okay, so <laughs> just put it everywhere you can. Exactly, get out there and talk about it. Um, it depends on how much you're willing to spend. So if it's just a blog, honestly, WordPress, 
has a lot of good themes that are a good place to start. Um, some of them are for free. I don't really know what themes are best these days. I haven't done a free theme or uh, all my themes have been custom lately. So I don't really know what, what the best themes are these days. Um, but you can usually take a look. WordPress has some that are either free or like, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever. That's a really good place to start. And then like, as you get your traction, I mean, honestly, I started pulling in a designer like three years ago and she, I end up redesigning my website every year or two. Blogs don't really have to look professional, right? Um, Gory, it really depends on if you want to make money. <laughs> if you're planning on, if this is an online business and you're going to bring in money with this, yeah, it needs to look professional. I mean, the, the, like it has, blogs have leveled up seriously in the last like five years. It used to not matter how your blog looked, and now it's like there are so many blogs that in order to differentiate yourself and show that you take yourself seriously, your blog has got to level up too. You got to show that you are willing to invest in yourself because what you have to offer is important to whoever's on your site. How do you get readers on your blog? Oh, the hundred million dollar question. Um, it's still, it's like getting out there and talking about it. It's guest posting. Oh, thanks, Corey. I appreciate that. It's guest posting on other blogs. You know, have you noticed how Huffington Post has like blown up Facebook? Like I feel like every week I get some person on my feed who's like, I just posted on Huffington Post. Go check out my guest post on Huffington Post. Um, but that is one of the platforms that's really helping a lot of bloggers like gain some traction. Find, make friends, honestly. Make friends in your industry. Make friends with people who are doing similar things. And as you're making friends with them, they'll like, be, there'll be more opportunities for them to guest post on your blog or you to guest post on their blog. Um, you have a podcast. That's awesome. Um, that's a great way to drive people to your blog. So offer, like if you don't do show notes already, definitely do show notes, like how I'm doing scope notes and directing people back to my website. Um, I love you guys and I want to help you, but I also want you on my website, <laughs> right? What well, blog site do I recommend? Um, so there's just different things like that to, rec to direct wherever you're getting traffic now back to your website and your websites where you have, yes, your blogs and your book is for sale and there's more details about your podcast and people can opt into your email list. So all of this is kind of tied together. Um, I'm a big fan of WordPress. WordPress is still the gold standard as far as I know. I know there are some people who are talking about Wix and Square or something or other. There are other platforms, but most people still talk about WordPress. And sign up for a um, like a paid one. There's WordPress.com and there's WordPress.org. Go for the paid one, get your own domain. You do have WordPress. Okay, good. So look around. Maybe all you need is to upgrade the theme and spend a little bit more time kind of optimizing it. Gory.wordpress.com. Okay. Gory.com is what you want. Take get get the get the WordPress out of there. Make it your own domain. Sign up for your own domain and have all your traffic redirected there. Especially if you have a podcast. Come on, you're you're taking it seriously. You're leveling up. Like you're investing in your business. So it's a really small investment, all things considered, to make yourself look like more of a professional. And honestly, if you have a professional online presence, even if you're only doing this on the side, like 10, 15 hours a week, it can look like you're doing it full time. So that's kind of the goal is that you want to be taken seriously. And that's circling back. That's one of the ways, that's one of the things that writing a book can help you do. It helps you appear and look and honestly feel more like a professional because you're taking all of your story, your philosophy, your ideas, and you're packaging it in this really professional book package to sell to people. And that's like a serious up level in your online business. So that's what I would encourage you guys to think about. It does not have to be Okay, it'll be challenging, but it doesn't have to be like the hardest thing you've ever done. I mean, it's just like any big goal in life. You set aside three to five hours a week, work on your book, and within a few months, you could have a book published on Amazon. And that can be the first of several like long-term assets for your business. So if you're the type of person who's already blogging like five times a week, I would suggest just pare it down. You know, go to once or twice a week and use that writing time that you're saving to write the book because the book will be an asset that you have for a long time. 
do have an editor. I am, well, I am an editor <laughs> and I also use, um, yeah, I used an editor when I was writing my own book. So, um, editors, we, we trade, we trade projects with each other and stuff. Um, so it's always, always essential to have a second pair of eyes. Um, if you want to talk about using me and my team, uh, paperravenediting.com is where all my stuff is. And I love to work with authors. I don't edit in foreign languages. <laughs> I've had several people tell me I need to learn how to speak Spanish or Swedish or whatever so that I can edit their stuff for them, but I, I don't do that currently. But I can help find someone who will. So yeah, you can get in touch with me at paperravenediting.com. And yeah, does anyone else have any other questions? about writing a book, it'll really help your business. Talk about attracting clients, getting interviews, getting speaking gigs. A book is definitely the way to go and really several books. I mean, why not? If you're gonna write one, and I promise you in the middle of writing one, you're gonna start thinking about, oh, I wonder what my next book could be about. On my website again, in fact, I'll pull it up for you so you can see it. Paperravenediting.com. And flip you guys around. Paper Raven Editing and dot com. Here's my site. Hello. And I have lots of blogs and stuff. I just posted about Periscope. So, yep. That's where I that's where I live. That's my, my online home. Hey guys, so I hope you are inspired to go write a book. It's not that hard. Just start. Alright everyone. Go catch the replay and scope notes at paperravenediting.com slash periscope. And I, yeah, sure. Oh, if you're not following me, I love to talk about writing. Hit the little scope guy down there. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. I really hope you get that whole Amazon thing sorted out. And reboot your blog. Take it up. Step it up a level. I think it'll be good. Um, hit the little Perry guy down here and hit the plus sign to follow me. And I scope about writing. I try to hit it every day. Uh, I took the weekend off, but um, we try to get on at least once a day and chat about writing and things like that. So that way, if you have any questions, you know that you can always find me here. All right, guys, have a good day and go do some writing. All right, bye.